the Lord has answered your prayer. And great things will take place in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour, the hour of your power. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you manifest your power in every life, even this morning in Jesus' name. Be exalted in every life. Glorified in every life. And Lord, you'll prove strong and great in every life in Jesus' name. Pour your blessings down upon everyone in the camp in Jesus' name. Touch our children, touch our youths, touch our students, and touch the adults in Jesus' name. Do something remarkable in every life. Unforgettable in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 28. Hast thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He's asking a question, and then he's giving an answer. He said, Have you read your Bible? Have you seen the actions of God? Have you seen the demonstration of his power? From the time of creation, have you not known that out of nothing, he created everything? He said, have you not heard in the lives of people that were before you and the great mountains they had and the great problems they had, how God rolled away their problems? Have you not heard? Have you not known? And have you not seen that from the beginning of the world, this creator, the creator of all things, that will do a creative work in your life today. That he does not faint, he is not weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. You cannot research his depths of the comprehension of the power of God and then get to the end. There is no end, there is no finality, there is no limitation of the power of God. And now he tells us on that basis, you need to understand that he giveth power to the faith. He says, among men who are created in the image of God, if we had continued in that image of God, he faints not, we would not be fainting. He is neither weary and never weary. If we had continued in the image in which we were created, we will not be weary, we will not be fainting. But now, he brings us back. He says, my original plan for you, my original goal for you, is that you will be like me. Let us create man, make man in our own image, in our own likeness, so that they will be like us. Now he says to get us back there. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to reverse the fall in our lives and to cleanse us from all our sins and to justify us and to recreate us, our spirit, our soul, even to touch our body. And now he gives power to the faith and to them that have no understanding or no might he gives strength. Even the youths unaided by God, men and women unaided by God, men and women, when they are not assisted by God, they faint and they are weary. And the young men unassisted by God, unsupported by God, without the grace of God and the young men without the love of God coming from Calvary and flowing into every life. It says they'll be weary and they will utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord. 
That's talking about you. I said that's talking about you. The people that understand, we can recover the image of God we lost in Adam. The people that come to the understanding that everything we lost from the time of creation to the time of the fall, we can recover everything. And they will wait on the Lord until all that power, all that strength, all the grace, all the ability, until everything is restored. Those that wait upon the Lord, those that clear their mind of every rubbish, those that clear their mind of every wrong idea, and they say, I know, I can get back to the point I have victory, to the point I have dominion, and to the point I never faint, and to the point I'm never wearied, and I'm going to wait on the Lord. And I believe from the understanding of what I've heard, what I've known, the understanding of the comprehension of the depths of the knowledge and the power of the Lord. I can recover the lost image. It says, they, for that understanding, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up. They will mount up. With wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary they shall walk they shall not faint that's why this morning we're looking at waiting for his resurrection power three things we're looking at number one tarrying for the uh, tarrying for the promise of total restoration tarrying tarrying for the promise of total restoration Restoration to everything we lost in the fall. Restoring our soul. Restoring our spirit. Restoring our strength. Restoring our perception. Restoring our vision. Restoring everything we have lost. Restoration. Tarina for the promise of total restoration. Number two, traveling. For the performance of threefold renewal. Threefold renewal. It will renew your body. It will renew your soul. It will renew your spirit. That means your entirety and your totality. There's going to be a renewal in Jesus' name. And it's not a renewal you get and lose. A renewal you receive. And then you miss again. This is going to be a threefold permanent restoration, renewal in your life in Jesus' name. Number three, testing the power of true revival. Testing the power of true revival. We're coming to number one. Number one, tarry. Tarry, that means waiting. You tarry, you wait, you seek the Lord, you call upon the Lord with all your heart, and you say, whatever others get, whatever others do not get, I am getting a total restoration. Did you hear that? You will get it. In Psalm 62, reading from verse 5, to tarry is to wait. To wait is to tarry in the presence of the Lord. In Psalm 62, verse 5, my soul, wait thou only upon God. The man is preaching to his own soul. The man is instructing his own soul. The man is saying, too long you have been weak, my soul. Too long you have been defeated, my soul. Too long you have been weary, and too long you have been fainting. This is the time, my soul, rise up and be strong. 
my soul wait thou only upon the lord only upon god only upon god all your other confidences having confidence in this will make you strong you'll be disappointed having confidence in that that will make you strong strong in the private strong in the public strong in the presence of the devil himself strong in the presence of any challenge of life and you have been thinking by this by this by that you'll be strong you've been disappointed it says now my soul come back to the creator of the heavens and the earth my soul waits thou only upon god for my expectation is from him my expectation is from him do you have any expectation today i said do you have expectation today it will fulfill all your expectations but your soul must not be restless your soul must not be on the move every time your soul must not be in a hurry your soul must be able to wait and tarry in the presence of the lord you must determine what you want you must determine how strong you want to be you must determine how unconquerable you want to be and then tell your soul wait in prayer tarry in his presence so that the expectation will not be disappointed thank god he'll give you your expectation tarry you have to tarry isaiah chapter 57 reading from verse 18 isaiah chapter 57 reading from verse 18 i have seen his ways i will heal him talking about you whatever the challenge whatever the sickness whatever the harassment of the devil whatever your fears however long that sickness might have been i have seen his ways he has repented i have seen his ways he has forsaken every other god idols i have seen his ways with all his heart he has come back to the throne of grace i have seen his ways he has cleared all the dirty things out of his way i have seen his ways he has corrected all those strong things that have been his life he has lied his life with my word i have seen his ways i will heal him let me direct it to you he has seen your ways he will heal you i will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners he will restore comfort unto you restoration restoration total restoration for the people that wait on the lord i'm looking at jeremiah chapter 30 jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 i will restore health unto thee every part of your brain every part of your body every part of you i will restore health unto you that weakness will not remain there that fear of sudden death will not remain there every medical condition that makes you afraid maybe i will soon pack up all that will not remain i will restore health unto thee unto who i said unto who who is the lord healing this morning who is the lord delivering this morning 
Oh, is the Lord setting free this morning? Whose yoke is going to be broken this morning? I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. External wounds that refuse to be healed, restoration today. Internal wounds that refuse to be healed, restoration today. Psychological wounds that refuse to be healed, restoration today. And wounds by the powers of darkness in your life that came, you don't know how, there is healing deliverance today. And all the spiritual wounds in the family, there is healing today. I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. But thank God, restoration has come to you. I said to you, don't look here and there. Your own restoration, total restoration, has come today. Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, Reading from verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Any part of your life you have not enjoyed some spiritual hidden locusts have taken your joy away. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Any part of your life that some hidden people running after you everywhere you go they have not allowed you to enjoy i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten somebody said something negative far away long ago and since that time the result and the effect of that negative thing has been following after you but now all the years you have lost because of negative utterance against your life I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palma worms, my great army, which I sent among you. After that restoration, what will happen? Verse 26, you shall eat in plenty. The jobless, you'll have job. The one who has been feeling alone and lonely, you'll have companion. And the one who has been living from hand to mouth, you are going to have surplus. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Point number two now, traveling for the performance of threefold restoration. We need to understand that man is made up of body, soul, and spirit. You are made up of body, soul, and spirit. If the spirit is sick, it affects the condition of the soul. If the soul is discouraged, it affects the condition of the body. If the body is oppressed and the body is not feeling too well, it affects the strength and the vision of the spirit, all the three parts of man. The spirit, the soul, the body, they are interrelated. And if one part is weak, if one part is not strong, if one part is having problem, it affects the other parts. And when the spirit is discouraged, it's down, doesn't want to do anything, it doesn't send any message to your brain that this is a mountain you can climb. 
this is the life you can live and this is the destiny you can get to the spirit has given over and therefore it's not giving instruction to your hand to move and to your feet to move and for your eyes to see and for your ears to hear even if you hear you are not making application when your soul is worried when your soul is discouraged and you are not telling your soul why are you so discouraged why are you so disheartened and the soul is down you'll be sluggish you'll be dragging your body you'll be dragging your life and everything you had aimed you'll do before you give up you give in to that discouragement the body cannot do anything but now the threefold revival revival is coming to your spirit Revival is coming to your soul. Revival is coming to your body. There will be a performance as you travail in prayer today in Jesus' name. You will travail. I said you will travail. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11, he shall see the travail of his soul. He, Christ, who went to get Simony, Christ, who prayed, Christ, who agonized, Christ, who went to prepare himself and get ready to die on the cross of Calvary so as to set everyone free. And to give us salvation, he, Christ, shall see the travail of his soul. To start with, as he travailed, strength came unto him. As he travailed, angels came to him and strengthened him. As he travailed, he rose up. He said, let us, disciples, children, let us go. The one that betrays me is at hand. As he travailed, the courage to face the cross came to him. As he travailed, he faced all the people that have come to arrest him. He said, are you seeking for Jesus? I am he. And if you are seeking for me, let, let these go. As he travailed, he faced Caiaphas. He faced Herod, he faced Pilate, was strength of character. He faced all his enemies with quiet dominion. As he travailed, the strength to be on the cross and the strength to say, Father, in your hands have I commend my spirit. As he travailed, he had the power to say, It is finished. And the same thing as you. Travail in prayer. Like Jesus Christ following after the Lord. Every weakness of your life will vanish away. Every sorrow in your life will vanish away. All the strength you have lost, you are going to regain. And he shall see the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied. There will be satisfaction in every area of your life when you see the travail, the result of the travail of your soul. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. It's because the travail, justification is coming to everyone. Salvation is coming to everyone. Victory over sin. Living a consistently holy, righteous, victorious life is coming to everyone because of his travail. My servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. Was heard such a thing. What will happen to you? Your testimony? When you begin to give the testimony, people will say, Who has ever heard such a testimony? Who has ever heard such a declaration? Who has heard such a thing? 
who has seen such things shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once for as soon as zion travailed she brought forth her children as soon as zion the people of god the people of zion as soon as zion travailed she brought forth her children it's when you travel you will bring a force you are bringing forth i said you are bringing forth the produce of faith the power of faith the possibilities of faith as soon as lion travailed she brought forth maybe you think those are old testament passages and you say now that christ has died now that he has provided everything for us there's no more traveling galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 19 galatians chapter 4 verse 19 my little children of whom i travail in birth again until christ the formed in you here is paul the apostle talking to the galatian believers they were saved they were children of god their faith in christ and the power of his death and the power of resurrection had watched in their lives before but now some erroneous ideas and false doctrine came to them and that shifted their focus away from christ and the victory they used to have they couldn't have anymore and they were already going back and the apostle told them if you go back to circumcision christ will be of no effect of no profit of no benefit unto you you'll be right back in your falling situation and fall in life before you knew the Lord. And he said to bring them back. To bring a renewal. And to bring a revival in their lives. He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. If Christ is going to be present mightily in us. There must be traveling. If Christ to be prominent constantly in our lives, there will be traveling. If Christ is going to be preeminent over our lives, in every area of our lives, that no matter where the enemy is coming from, Christ is mightily powerful in your life, you will travel. God will help you. I said, God will help you. You will travail in Jesus' name. Look at the three parts of man I've made reference to. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. The three parts of man that needs a divine touch, a divine transformation, renewal, revival, threefold. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace, the God of power, the God of all possibilities, sanctify you wholly, entirely, completely, permanently. I was waiting for an amen in that corner. The God of peace, the God of power, the God of all possibilities, sanctify you completely. And I pray God, look at this now, number one, your whole spirit. Number two, your whole soul. Number three, your whole body be preserved, blameless, stainless, powerful, authoritative, 
strong, unconquerable unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who has called you, who also will do it. He will do it for you. Total cleansing of your soul and total recreation of your spirit and total healing and health in your body your body your soul your spirit threefold renewal will come in jesus name look at verse 24 again faithfully see that calleth you as he called you he called me as he called you Faithfully see that calleth you who also will do it. Number one, tarrying. Number two, traveling. Number three, tasting the power of true revival. You will taste it today. Power for true revival. You will have it. You will receive it. It will become part of your life. Psalm 34. Reading from verse 8. Psalm 34. Reading from verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come and taste his salvation. And see that the Lord is good and gracious. Come and taste his healing. And see that the Lord is good and gracious. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Come and taste his deliverance and see that the Lord is mighty and the Lord is good. Come and taste his recreation and see that the Lord is faithful and good. He has said he will recreate us. And make us new creatures. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You will trust him. I said you will trust him. Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 4. Hebrews chapter 6. The latter part of verse 4 is talking about what you are going to taste. Second part, it says, And have tasted of the heavenly gift. It's available this morning. The heavenly gift for you to taste. And you were partakers of the Holy Ghost. You'll be a partaker this morning. Verse 5, and I've tasted the good word of the Lord, the good word of God, the goodness in the word of God, the power in the word of God. They have tasted of the good power of that word of God, and I've tasted the powers of the world to come. This is your day. It says in First Peter chapter 2, from verse 1, there is something to taste. The grace of God, the goodness of God, the power of God, and the powers of the world to come. In First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies, and envies and all evil speaking if you're going to tarry you must lay all this is aside you mean business with god you want to have the great manifestation of the power of god in your life as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby your stunted growth will turn to a dynamic growth. From today, you will grow. Look at verse 3. If so be 
ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is gracious. You will taste of true revival even from this morning in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? You have been coming to retreat, and you have come faithfully at this time. But how long will you halt between two opinions? Can I be strong? Will I remain weak? How long will you hold between two opinions? Can I maintain my salvation? Or will I go on falling and rising, falling and rising? How long will you hold between two opinions? All the hardened, established character that is not making you to have progress, can I be free or am doomed to constant failure? How long will you hold between two opinions? Can I have been hearing about this sanctification holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? Can I truly be holy in private, in the public, in my heart, in my life, in my character, in my conscience? Or will I continue just dragging myself and managing to live the Christian life? at the periphery, at the circumference, at the edge of the Christian standard. How long are you going to hold between two opinions? I've heard about the power of the Holy Ghost that will come upon me and then I'll be so strong, I will run, I will not fade, I will walk and not be weary. But can it be true about me? How long are you going to hold between two opinions? This morning, you make up your mind. It's going to be the morning of the grace of God. The morning of the goodness of God. And the morning of the power of God in every life in Jesus' name. No more halting between two opinions. No more doubting and reasoning whether it's possible or not. And no more uh, staying away from the time of prayer. This morning, you will tarry. This morning, you will travel. And this morning, you will taste of the power of the world to come in Jesus' name. Look at verse 30 of that same First Kings. Chapter 18, and Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. Come near this morning. Don't go to the toilet while prayer is going on. Don't be roaming about while prayer is going on. We're receiving strength. We're receiving power. We're receiving healing. We're receiving courage. We're receiving everything we need this morning. Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was broken down. You have to repair that altar. Everything, all the vows you made before, all the consecration you made before, as you gave yourself to the Lord initially, and now things are not the way they used to be. Your commitment, your consecration, your faithfulness, your sacrifice, your giving unto the Lord, and your staying with the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, repair the broken altar. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of of the Lord, build an altar in your heart, an altar in your soul, an altar in your family for the name of the Lord and make up your mind that the time of wandering about and the time of being a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, all that time is gone. 
a prodigal preacher, a prodigal pastor, a prodigal prophet, all the time is gone. A prodigal father, a prodigal mother, a prodigal husband, a prodigal wife, all the time is gone. A prodigal daughter, a prodigal son, a prodigal child, all the time is gone. Make up your mind. An image, a trench about the altar. As great as wood contain to measures of seed. And you put the wood in order. Set your life in order. All the life that is scattered here and there. Your thoughts are scattered there and there. And your decisions are scattered here and there. And your life is not followed, following a straight line. It says you need to put everything in order. And cut the bullock in pieces. And lay him on the wood. Bring your sacrifice of time, your sacrifice of your life, and lay it upon the altar, and fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And he did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And he did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with the water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob of Israel, let it be known this day. You will know it this day. I said, you will know each day that thou art God, that God is in the land and God is in our midst and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their hearts back again then the fire of the lord fell the fire will fall this morning Amen. on the altar of your soul of your spirit your body and the fire will burn everything that is not supposed to be there will burn it away from your life today and it says then, the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, when all the people saw it, are you going to see something today? Are you going to see power today? Are you going to see a revival today? And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord he is God. The Lord he is God. This morning, the Lord is on the throne. His power is available. His fire is going to fall. And the great power that will burn everything negative out of your life, that power is there this morning. The fire of the Lord fell, and all the people saw it. You'll be a partaker. I said you'll be a partaker. I said you'll be a partaker. Rise up and partake of the goodness of God. Rise up and partake of the grace of God. Rise up and partake of the power of God. You need to tarry, and you need to wake up, and you need to travel before the Lord and taste the power of true revival and the fire will burn and the fire will burn open your mouth open your mouth day strength is a time for you to have every blessing that your soul your spirit and your body every blessing that you need call upon him is ready to answer this is the morning of your renewal, of your restoration, of your revival.